Did you know that many people take vitamin K2 and D3 in combination, thinking it's good for their health, when in reality, it could be silently damaging their body? Recently, I came across an alarming fact. People over 70 can lose up to 15% of their kidney function in just a few months. Not because of rare diseases, but because of something as common as K2D3 combo supplements. And the scary part is, this isn't rare. Today, I want to explain why taking K2 and D3 in the same pill can be a dangerous mistake, what these nutrients really do inside your body, and most importantly, how to take them safely and effectively. Stay with me until the end, because I'll share exact dosages, best times of day, and practical strategies that could protect your heart, your bones, and even your energy levels. Before we get started, tap subscribe to stay up to date with every post. The most common mistake, combo capsules. At first glance, those K2D3 combination pills seem like a smart idea. Just one capsule a day, convenient, simple, and marketed as the perfect formula for heart and bone health. But here's the trap. Nearly all of them contain the same formula. Around 90 micrograms of K2 and 5,000 units of D3. On the surface, that looks fine. But dig deeper, and there's a serious problem. To actually make a difference in your body, you need at least 400 micrograms of K2 daily. That's four times the amount found in most capsules. If you try to compensate by taking four pills, you end up with 20,000 units of D3, which is dangerously high and can overwhelm your kidneys. That's the mistake many people are making, trying to get enough K2 while unknowingly overdosing on D3. Why vitamin K2 is so special? Before we dive into how it works with D3, let's answer the key question, what does K2 actually do? Many people believe K2 works like a magnet, pulling calcium out of the arteries. But the truth is more fascinating. K2 activates two essential proteins. Matrix GLA protein, which prevents calcium from sticking to artery walls. Osteocalcin, which directs calcium to where it belongs, your bones. Think of it like a traffic system. One set of signals keeps cars out of danger zones, while guides make sure traffic reaches the right destination. But not all K2 is created equal. There are two main forms you need to know about. MK7, found in natto, the traditional Japanese fermented soybean dish. It can stay active in your bloodstream for up to three days. That makes it the best option for long-term cardiovascular health. Just 180 to 360 micrograms daily can reduce arterial stiffness by 10 to 20%. MK4, found in eggs, cheese, and liver. It disappears from the blood within hours. To be effective for osteoporosis, you need massive doses, 45 milligrams per day. Bottom line, if you want to protect your heart and arteries, MK7 is the winner. The hidden link. K2, inflammation, and insulin resistance. Here's a fact most people have never heard. Yes, K2 helps protect the heart, but its real power doesn't just come from controlling calcium. One of its most powerful effects is improving insulin resistance, a silent killer that drives heart attacks and strokes. With just 180 to 360 micrograms a day, Studies show K2 can lower your HOMAIR score by 10 to 20%. That means less inflammation, better glucose control, and up to 30% lower cardiovascular risk for people with diabetes or prediabetes. And this connects directly to something more recent. During the COVID pandemic, researchers discovered that people low in K2 were at higher risk of severe complications. They were more likely to experience cytokine storms, heart problems, and what we now call long COVID, chronic fatigue, brain fog, and shortness of breath. 
Even more impressive, studies reveal that combining K2MK7 with D3 reduced long COVID symptoms by 20 to 30%. That's why many experts now call K2 the supplement of the post-pandemic decade. Can you get enough K2 from food alone? Yes, K2 is present in certain foods. Beef liver, hard-aged cheeses, egg yolks, sauerkraut, and especially natto. But here's the catch. To reach the optimal daily dose, you'd need to eat enormous amounts. For example, eight to 10 egg yolks every single day, nearly half a pound of beef liver, or about three ounces of natto. Let's be honest, very few people can stick to that kind of diet, especially natto, which many describe as slimy beans with the smell of old cheese. That's why in reality, supplements are the most practical way to get enough K2 daily. Hang on a sec. Before we carry on, tap that subscribe button so you're first to see what's coming next. Now let's talk about vitamin D3. D3 is another key nutrient, but it works differently from K2. It acts more like a hormone than a vitamin. It's stored in body fat, so too much can become toxic. The ideal blood range is between 50 and 90 nanograms per milliliter. For most people, 5,000 IU per day is a safe and effective dose. But here's the golden rule. Test before you supplement. Don't just guess. Many people believe sunlight is enough to make D3. Unfortunately, after the age of 60, your skin produces only about 25% as much vitamin D as it did at age 20. Add long winters, sunscreen, or limited outdoor time, and deficiency becomes almost guaranteed. And what about excess D3? Too much raises blood calcium and can cause kidney damage. The perfect pair, D3 is the truck, K2 is the GPS. Here's the key to understanding the synergy. D3 boosts calcium absorption from food. K2 makes sure that calcium ends up in the right place. Think of it like a delivery system. D3 is the truck carrying the load. K2 is the GPS giving directions. Without D3, the truck never leaves the warehouse. Without K2, the truck gets lost and dumps calcium in the wrong place, your arteries. That's why they work beautifully together, but not in the same capsule because the ratios and combo pills are never correct. How to take them safely. So what's the best strategy? Vitamin K2, MK7, 180 to 360 micrograms daily, preferably taken in the evening. Vitamin D3, 5,000 IU daily, but only after a blood test confirms you need it. Take it in the morning with a meal containing healthy fats for better absorption. Always avoid combo pills. That's how you get the benefits without the risks. Proven benefits when taken correctly. When K2 and D3 are used properly, science shows amazing results. 60% fewer fractures in people with osteoporosis, 10 to 20% improvement in insulin resistance, 30% lower cardiovascular risk in diabetics, 20 to 30% reduction in long COVID symptoms, plus more energy, sharper brain function, and a stronger immune system. We've covered a lot today. You learn why combo capsules can be dangerous, the difference between MK4 and MK7, the surprising connection to insulin resistance in COVID, and the safest way to use D3 and K2 for maximum benefit. Now I want to hear from you. What surprised you the most? The risks of combo supplements, the hidden link to long COVID, or the difference between MK4 and MK7? Drop your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to know. And if this video helped you, give it a like, share it with someone who takes supplements, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video that could make a real difference for your health. Remember, supplements are just tools. They don't replace a healthy lifestyle. Diet always comes first. Stay active, build muscle, and keep excess fat under control, 
especially after age 60.